so hello everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about SuperSearch with OpenSearch and Python. My name is Liza Shoa. Uh, I work for Ivan as a developer advocate. Uh, we do our best to manage OpenSearch databases for you. I also, I'm also very active in the Pilates community and also in the Python community, to be honest. I manage the Pilates Munich group. And yeah, you can follow me here on my Twitter account, or you can also check it out the Twitter account of my company. So what is the agenda for today? So I'll talk about what is open search and why should you consider open search in your projects? And I also will explain how can you write search queries and I will do it uh, with a demo. So wish me luck. <laughs> so what is open search? So open search, as you can see, as you can hear in the name, it has open, open is actually open source. So it means that you can download and you can try out and you can also change the code and you can contribute back to this, uh, to this project. If you know Elasticsearch, OpenSearch is a direct fork of Elasticsearch version 7.10. So if you're familiar with Elasticsearch, you will be familiar with OpenSearch as well. But now they are different projects and so on. It's a search engine, so it's also in the name. And I would say that actually the superpower of open, of open search is being a search engine. But it's not only that, you can use open search to actually store a huge amount of data. Uh, you can query basically near real time. And you can also uh, use it to uh, visualize data. So open search comes with open search dashboards that you can do that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, some other things about OpenSearch is that if you are familiar with REST API, it does have support for REST API, and also you can use in different languages. Uh, has official clients for Python, for Node.js, from Go, from yeah, of course for Python. <laughs> so why should you consider using OpenSearch? When I think about OpenSearch, I try to uh, summarize. What are some of the superpowers that OpenSearch have it? And uh, I try to think about really a superhero. So one of the powers of OpenSearch is that it's multilingual. So it has support for more than 30 languages, which means that when you are sending data, when you're sending your JSON data to OpenSearch, you can actually specify the language and you can do more configurations to support those languages. So I would say that OpenSearch, if it was a hero, would speak more than 30 languages. It also can read your mind uh, because it does have support for auto-completion. Uh, so I think you may have seen some uh, other engines when you type in and kind of the engine tries to see oh, what's relevant for this person and try to come up with some suggestions. So I would say that is also a way that OpenSearch does. It helps you to do auto-completion if you configure it correct. And it, you can imagine if uh, OpenSearch was a, would be a superhero and could read so many languages, uh, could the OpenSearch also understand my broken English? Yes. So if you query with uh, wrong or misspelling or mistypo, OpenSearch also would, you can configure it for searching, so you can still get some results from it. And the last I would say is dynamic mapping, uh, which means you don't need to specify, when you're sending data to OpenSearch, you don't need to specify all the fields uh, and have a schema already, you can just send and OpenSearch will try to figure out from the data that you send which kind of type uh, the fields will have. You can also configure the, the mapping before, uh, but you can use dynamic mapping. So I found this really cool. And also this would be some of the superpowers. Additionally is open source. So now I will show you how can you write some search queries uh, with open search. The first thing we need, actually, I have it here, a demo, uh, open search Python dive in, and we need py the Python client for the open search. Uh, we need also lots of data. I chose food. Uh, so in case I come up here with different recipes and you find it interesting, you can tell me, I will send you. So the first square that I will show you is the match one. 
So I'll go to the command line. Okay. <laughs> so I have it here. Let me see. Okay, it's a little bit down, but it's okay. So I have it here, uh, the repository, and let's wait a little bit for the person. So you can see it here on the readme. I have here the readme where they explain where you can get this data set, uh, how the repository structure is, and a little bit more about what kind of queries you can find it. And during the presentation, I'll be using this one here, the search.py. So we don't need to worry about this. I will go over uh, with the synth about the syntax later. But yeah, let's see what the match query can give us. So I'll be using Python. Python uh, search.py uh, match and I will look in the title so first I will give you the field and I will look for some combination and the more interesting one that I could come up was chocolate and garlic I think they are great separated and I want to see if I can find anything where they are together of course I will find this <laughs> but yeah let's see so you can see it here that we do find uh, chocolate garlic Cuban bread and we find some others like just garlic bread, garlic shrimp and so on. Uh, you may be thinking why do I get steel things just with garlic if I'm using the match, uh, the match query. So by default the match query uses the operator OR uh, which means that we'll be, when we do this query it's actually checking for chocolate or garlic. So one way we could actually specify, okay, I actually just want words that have chocolate, uh, I just want uh, results of my documents that have chocolate and garlic. So what I could do, I could uh, give it an operator, like the end one, and you see that now we can get only the Cuba bread, which I think it would be interesting for me to try out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one thing that you can see it here is that even though I, yeah, let's see actually how is the syntax so you can understand how would you do that in Python. So here, first of all, I have to create the client uh, and I have one of the methods called dot .search that will help me to build the square. So I give it the index, which I indexed my data beforehand and I also have to build the query, uh, the query. It's in a dictionary and I define it here, the word keyword query, and I have to give it the query type. OpenSearch has many query types. Uh, I will show you today three, but for example, this time we gave it match. So this would be one of it. We have to give the field name that we are interested to look for the results. And we have to also give what kind of words or what kind of sentence we are looking on there. And also the operator. If you don't give it the operator, then it's the default one or. So this would be like how the syntax work in the code. And you see the result here. But coming back to the code, if we actually change the position between garlic and chocolate and see if we can still get some result, so if we do it here, you see that actually match does not care, does not care, <laughs> does not care about the order of the words. But let's suppose I do have two names uh, in my name. And if you are looking for me in a database, uh, if you exchange my names or put different, you will find someone else. So sometimes the order does matter. And what kind of query you would use in this case? So there is another one called match phrase that we can check it out how it works. So for example, uh, I will also use search.py. Uh, so I have an interface here that I did with typer and that's why I can easily uh, just type here what I want and it will give me the results. Uh, but you can check out the code, how could you do that um, like on your own. So here I have, for example, match phrase and I'll be looking in title, it's in title. And let's suppose that I will look for uh, cake and coconut. Let's see what, what will come up. So is it nothing come up. Uh, and you maybe I was wondering like, I have here 20,000 recipes and I don't believe that there is no cake coconut. 
but uh, the thing is my mother tongue is Portuguese so sometimes I yeah, I get a bit confused about the order of the adjective and the substantive. <laughs> and this is an interesting one because you have to think about your user, right? So if actually I change it here, the order, and I put coconut cake, then it's correct because it's correct English, right? But let's suppose that, and then we can get here a uh, coconut cake and so on and so forth. But let's suppose I have still the wrong order. So if I had cake and coconut, how could I still tell who's the match phrase? So I tell that, yes, I do care that these two words are have an order, but I want to give some flexibility. So yeah, maybe there is some word in between, maybe you can exchange the, uh, this, the word and so on. So that is something that is very cool about the match phrase that you can give a slope. So for example, if here I get a slope of one, then you can see that now I can get some match. So I can see that there is cake with coconut uh, and basically yeah, there is cake, but there is a word in between. And how is that the match phrase actually works and why is that that you can give some slope for it? So I do have it here, something about the match phrase, just for you to understand what kind of uh, flexibility, how the slope works. So the slope is the acceptable distance between two words. So they could be like switch it, they could be, you could have words in between, uh, but you have to account for those distances. So here, for example, our document come out was cake with coconut. Uh, and our query was cake coconut. How did it actually give a slope of one? How did it actually match it? So if we just, uh, yeah switch coconut from the position two to the position three, we could have a match here. So I guess this is, was a piece of cake, it's very simple to understand, but it's how the principle of the slope works. And if we go back, actually, let me continue here. <laughs> I press the wrong button. So yeah, let's continue. Uh, another one that I want to show you today is the fuzzy query. So I told you that uh, open search does uh, allow fuzziness. And the fuzziness would be like, for example, you mistype some words and you have to you don't expect that the user write exactly exactly what they want. So you have to be a bit flexible about your queries. And the fuzzy query would work like this. For the fuzzy query, I tried to find a word that I found a bit uh, confusing for me. So would be the word desert, uh, because it's very close to desert and they are very similar. Desert or desert. So we're gonna be looking for desert and try to find something with it. So let's suppose I mistype it and I look for desert here. Oops, uh, my bad. <laughs> so I have to give a, if I have to give a fuzziness uh, level. So for example, I would give has default zero. So I'm not allowing any kind of fuzziness. And you see here, I get no results. But if I go here and I give default, like if I change to one, you can see it here that now actually the word desert will map with this word here. And why do I need just one slope? Because uh, I only have an extra S. But maybe you are thinking, but why uh, the word, what I'm querying is actually lowercase and what I'm seeing there is actually uppercase? This is a good question. <laughs> if someone asks it, I will answer. But yeah, let's go back to the, to the first query. And so how could you build this query? So basically you will replace the word false uh, the, the type of query for the word fuzz, and it would give the type of what field you are looking for your question. And here would be the value would be desert, uh, the one which is dry, not the sweet one, and the fuzziness would be one. And in this case, I can still get some results here. So that's what very sh short introduction about open search, but I hope you understood the basics uh, and you may want to try out, you can check out this. Uh, I'll add more queries there. Thank you.